Biological safety cabinets are a familiar part of TV and movie sets. You'll see them in NCIS, The Avengers, and the BBC version of Sherlock, and the list goes on. So BSCs are often part of today's storytelling, but myths about BSCs can cost your lab money. Buying more cabinet than you need, or running it more than you must, adds budget dollars many labs don't have to spare. For example, because the descriptions for the HEPA filters in the BSC may say they are 99.99% or more effective at 0.3 micrometers, some people believe work with viruses, which are smaller than 0.3 micrometers, requires an externally exhausted cabinet like a class two type B2 BSC. But a HEPA filter functions more like a forest than a net and even smaller viruses are captured as they attempt to flow through and around the filter's fibers. In fact, HEPA filters have something called a most penetrating particle size. So when we say a filter is 99.995% efficient at the most penetrating particle size of 0.3 micrometers, we are saying particles like viruses that are even smaller are captured with even greater efficiency. So unless you're working with toxic gases, standard HEPA filter exhaust is probably sufficient for your cell culture work, which can be found in a class two type A2 BSC. Another myth tells us that biosafety cabinets should be left on 24 hours a day. Lots of old manuals say so, but for perspective, one manual from the 1960s suggested using smoke from your cigarette to test the biosafety cabinet airflow. Since modern protocols include a thorough surface decontamination before beginning work, today's common sense suggests running a cabinet only when needed, saving energy costs and prolonging motor and filter lifespans.